Hey, hi everyone, Grandma Diane here. It's time for Grandma Diane's story time. I am home today <laughs> at 11 o'clock, <laughs> which is wonderful. Um, I'm going to read to you today a book called And the Dish Ran Away with the Spoon. And the author is Janet Stevens and Susan Stevens Crummel. Um, I really come to enjoy reading their books as as you can tell by the number of those that I have read um, and here it says illustrated by Janet Stevens so it's Janet Stevens and Susan Stevens Crummel illustrated by Janet Stevens and <clears throat> it is a public library book and it is published by Harcourt Incorporated Okay, so here the end pages are quite interesting. It looks like somebody's bedroom, doesn't it? And this looks like it might be somebody's bed. Or maybe it's a table. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And here's some books over here. Uh, perhaps it is a bedroom. Let's find out. Mother Goose Nursery Tales. And the dish ran away with the spoon. Do you know what that comes from? He diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such a sight, and the dish ran away with the spoon. We'll see if that's the same one. Janet Stevens and Susan Stevens Crummel, and illustrated by Janet Stevens, and published by Harcourt Incorporated. Oh, hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle. It is the one, isn't it? The cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such sport. And the dish ran away with the spoon. <laughs> the cat and the fiddle. The cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such a sport. And the dish ran away with the spoon. <laughs> Cool. Oh. Everybody up. They didn't come back. Hmm. Really? Looks like we've got the cat. Cat and the fiddle. The cow that jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such a sport, and the dish ran away with the spoon. And they didn't come back. Really? Hmm. Cow opened one eye. What do you mean they didn't come back? Dish and spoon always come back. Not this time, said Cat. Look, they're gone for good. History, adios. Leave them alone and they'll come home, mumbled dog. Now leave me alone. Can't you see I'm dog tired? <laughs> You're tired, said Cow. <laughs> this is a dog that's tired. <laughs> You're tired, said Cow. Ever tried jumping over the moon? Well, whoop de doo to you, said Dog. Why do we need dish and spoon anyway? We just do, said Cat. It's the way our rhyme goes. I fiddle, she jumps, you laugh, they run. Then they come back so we can do it again the next time. Without dish and spoon, there's no rhyme. No more diddle diddle. It's over. Why don't we just change the part, dog growled. Cow yawned. We could end it, and the cow took a nap until noon. Or maybe, and the little dog bit a baboon, dog smirked. <laughs> oh, they are trying to be silly, aren't they? Stop fiddling around, Cat demanded. We don't have much time. You know our rhyme gets read every night, but it can't be read without dish and spoon. We have to find them now. Cow slowly got up. Don't have a cow, Cat. I'm coming, I'm coming. Doggone it, muttered Dog. I guess I'm coming too. So off went the three with the hay diddle dee. By the light of the silvery moon, the cat with his fiddle, the cow and the dog to bring back the dish and the spoon. And there they go. 
setting off to find the dish and the spoon. Hmm. Well, here they all are, searching. And look what they find. A fork. Soon they came to a fork in the road. Excuse me, fork, we're in a jam, said Cat. Dish and spoon ran away, and I rhyme can't be read without them. Can you help us? Hmm... Fork thought for a moment. Let's see. A couple of lost sheep wandered by. Four and twenty blackbirds flew over. Oh, yes, I remember seeing a dish with little flowers on it and a long, skinny spoon. In fact, they looked kind of familiar. I think we're from the same place setting. Cut the blah, 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 and get to the point, said Dog. Which way did they go? Fork glared. You sure are a grumpy little dog. They could have gone any direction, north, south, east, west, northeast, northwest, west, east. There's no west, east, interrupted Cat. I'm confused. Maybe you could draw us a map. Well, I'll take a stab at it, said Fork. <laughs> oh, my. Look at this drawing. Oh, Wow. That's quite a drawing. I guess he did take a stab at it. He's even got a, a map key. He's got Little Miss Muffet, Bo Peep, School, Little Boy Blue. Do you know that one? Little Boy Blue, come blow your horn. The sheep's in the meadow, the cow's in the corn. But where's the little boy who looks after the sheep? He's under the haystack, fast asleep. Here's Wolf's house. Three men in a tub, beanstalk, house that Jack built, Humpty Dumpty's wall, three bears, house, me, that's the fork, <laughs> home, and then he's got a <laughs> crooked mile, oh my, a garden, water, meadow, dark forest, not so dark forest, path, hill, he drew quite a map, my goodness. I like it. I like it. Which way should we go, asked Cat. The three bears live one mile east, and Little Boy Blue's haystack is one mile west. Three bears, said Cow. They say Mama Bear's bed is really soft. Fork looked worried. I wouldn't go there. The bears don't like strangers dropping by. Then it's off to the haystack, cried Cat. With a blow of a horn and the cow and the corn, the three headed off to the west. The cranky old dog and the fiddle and cat and the cow who just wanted to rest. <laughs> so here's the path that they're taking off. They're here and they're going here. Off to the west. Here he is, yelled Cat. He's under the haystack, fast asleep. Yeah, it's Little Boy Blue, right? Little Boy Blue, come blow your horn. The sheep's in the meadow, the cow's in the corn. But where's the little boy who looks after the sheep? He's under the haystack, fast asleep. Here he is, yelled Cat. He's under the haystack, fast asleep. Wake up, lazy little boy, barked Dog. Shh, he looks so peaceful, whispered Cow. I think I'll hit the hay. There's no time for a nap, warned Cat. Search the haystack. Ah, Dog sneezed. Hmm. The haystack was gone. <laughs> well, the dog sneezed it away, didn't he? No dish and spoon in here, said Cow. Little Boy Blue rubbed his eyes. Hey, where'd my haystack go? Sorry, dog has hay fever, Cat replied. We're in a pickle. Dish and spoon ran away, and our rhyme can't be read without them. Can you help us? That's nothing to sneeze at. Little Boy Blue stretched, but I've been asleep. I can't even find my cows and sheep. And where's that horn? We're bar you're barking. We're barking up the wrong tree, Dog grumbled. Let's go north to Little Miss Muffet. With a curd and a way and a dickery day, they set out for Miss Muffet's place. The cat with the fiddle, the cow, the cow who could jump, and the dog with a scowl on her face. Hmm. So here's the haystack. Now we're going up here to 
Miss Muffet's house. Do you know that one? About little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet, eating her curds and whey. Along came a spider and sat down beside her and frightened Miss Muffet away. There's the spider. No Miss Muffet. A big creepy spider sat on a tuffet. May I help you? We're in a mess, said Cat. Dish and spoon ran away. Yay, Spider interrupted. I have the same problem with Muffet. I try to be nice, get to know her, even sit down beside her. Then, pfft, gone, every time. But Muffet always comes by, back, right, said Cow. This time, Dish and spoon come back. Are they here? The only dishes here are the ones in the sink. Were, were your friends clean or dirty? Spider asked. They were clean when they left, Dog said, but who knows what they look like now. Cat rummaged through the sink. I don't see them. Now what? Spider grinned. Why don't you try Wolf's house? It's about a mile east of here. You mean the b -b -b big b bad wolf, said Cow? He's not big and bad all the time, said Spider. Why, Wolf is very kind to strangers. I bet he's having some for lunch right now. Mm. Really? With a huff and a puff and a diddle dee duff by the hair of their chinny chin chins, the cow and the dog and the cat traveled east to where the dark forest begins. Mm. Okay. No bones about it, whispered dog. It's dark in this neck of the woods. Cow stopped. Why don't you two just go on ahead? I'll wait right here. Don't be a chicken, said Cat. I'm not a chicken, I'm a cow. Then get a move on, Cat ordered. They crept deeper and deeper into the forest. Look, whispered Cat, there's Wolf's house. I'm l looking, Cow stammered. It looks pretty big and bad to me. Dog marched ahead. Come on, I bet his bark is worse, worse than his bite. Hmm. Here they all are, and there's the wolf. Wolf opened the door. Hello, my little morsels. Come in and join me for lunch. We're in a predicament, said Cat bravely. Dish and spoon ran away, and our rhyme can't be read without them. Can you help us? Of course I can, Wolf licked his chops. But you three look so tired, I have a nice tub of hot water bubbling over the fire. First I can rub-a-dub-dub -dub you down with a little seasoning, uh, I mean with a little bath oil. Then Dog spotted it on the floor, a tiny chip of flowered china. Our friends, she gasped. What have you done with our friends? Here's the tiny chip of, of uh, china on the floor. Wolf grabbed her. Come on, you dirty dog. It's time to get in the tub. I'm just in the mood for a tasty dog treat. I'm not tasty, pleaded dog. I'm grumpy and tough. Wolf held dog over the pot of boiling water. Then you'll taste just like my mom is cooking. Cow screamed, let that go. But of course, I'll let her go right into the pot. Wolf laughed. Ha, ha, ha. Just then, Cat had an idea. He put his fiddle under his chin and began to play a soft and tender lullaby. Wolf stopped. He turned his head. My mama, my mama. She used to sing that song to me every night before I went to sleep. Wolf cradled Dog in his arms and crooned, rock a -bye, Wolfie, in your big bed. <laughs> look at the look on the dog's face. <laughs> He looks pretty startled. Wolf lay down on the floor. His big eyes closed and his big ears flopped. The big bad wolf was fast asleep. Dog wriggled free. They all tiptoed past Wolf, then bolted out the door and down the path. <laughs> look at the funny look he's given him. <laughs> oh my. Whew, cow sighed. That was a close shave. We're not out of the woods yet, panted Dog. Suddenly a voice boomed in the distance. Fee, fi, fo, fish. I smell the blood of a spoon and dish. 
cat, dog, and cow froze. The voice is coming from the east, said cow. It sounds like a giant, cried dog. Dish and spoon must be at the beanstalk. Cat grabbed the map from cow. Oh no, the beanstalk, look how far away it is. <laughs> oh, dog. Ew, my, I can help, said cow. Hop on, I'll get us there in a flash. And away they go. With a fee and a fum and a twiddledy dum the cow jumped high in the air. Over the forest and meadows they flew, and lickety-split, they were there. And here's the wolf's house. And now they're going all the way over here to the beanstalk. And they made it just that fast. This cow gave them a ride. <laughs> <clears throat> cow, cat, and dog landed at the foot of the beanstalk. Help! came a cry from above. We're falling down, falling down, falling down. Crash, boing. At last they had found dish and spoon. And they were falling down, weren't they? My goodness. Cat rushed over. Spoon, spoon, are you all right? I think I think so, said spoon, but but where's dish? She's over here, said cow, and she's over here, said dog. And she's over here, too, said Cat. Oh, no, cried Spoon. She's everywhere. As they picked up the broken pieces, Spoon sobbed. Wolf chased us up the beanstalk, then Giant chased us down the beanstalk, and we slipped. We didn't mean to run away. Each time our rhyme was read, we went a little farther and a little farther. This time we went too far and got lost. It was scary. Look, Dish is trying to say something, said Cow. Quick, put her mouthpieces together. I want to go home, whispered Dish. I suppose she does. With a dish and in a sack, they all headed back, and hardly a sentence was spoken. The cat, the dog, the cow, and the spoon, their friend in their hearts, were broken. All right, so now they're, they were at the beanstalk, and now they're starting home. And home is over here, isn't it? Now what are we going to do, cat moaned, as they traveled south toward home. This is really the end, the final curtain. Dish is nothing but a pile of chips. Our rhyme is over forever. Dog star stopped in his tracks. Look, Humpty's wall. He falls apart every day. Somebody has to put him back together. Let's go find out who. They raced toward the wall. Dog spotted a sign on a nearby tree. Jack's repair shop. You blew it, I glue it. And if we go back here to the map, you see right here is Humpty Dumpty's wall, and that's right where they are. So Humpty Dumpty falls off every day, and every day has to get put back together again, and he must do it at the repair shop. And here's his wall, and he's not there, is he? Let's see what happens. And see what Dog has in his uh, sack here? He has the chip pieces of the plate. So maybe, hmm, hmm, he looks like a nice guy, doesn't he? And there's cat, spoon, dog. He's got paint, glue, brushes, and three blind mice that must help him. Inside Jack's shop, the floor was covered with eggshells, broken beds and chairs, snipped off noses and sticks and straws. What's the problem? asked Jack, gluing a tail on a mouse. Dish went to pieces. Our rhyme has fallen apart. Can you help us? Cat asked sadly. I am a Jack of all trades, and I'm nimble and quick, too. Jack took the sack. But this looks bad, really bad. I'll see what I can do. If he's nimble and quick, do you suppose he might be 
The jack that jumped over the candlestick? How does that one go? Jack, Jack, be quick. Jack, jump over the candlestick. Maybe that is him. Do you think? And the three blind mice get their tails chopped off in their story, don't they? Let's see, how does that one go? Three blind mice, three blind mice. Da 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 They cut off their tail with a butcher knife. Three blind mice. <laughs> so they brought their tails back to be glued back on. They paced up and down with a fiddledy frown. Spoon, little dog, cat, and cow. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't help anyone now. Oh boy, they're all waiting to see what's going to happen to plate, aren't they? Or the dish, I mean. At last, Jack returned, and dish was right behind him. It was tough, but I stuck to it. See, dish is as good as new, said Jack. Well, except for the missing piece. You mean this piece, said dog? holding out the chip of flowered china. You found it, cried Dish. It chipped off when I was running from Wolf. I crashed into that big pot. Jack glued the chip in place. Hooray! Dish is back together, and so are we. Everyone cheered as they rushed out. Now the three blind mice are still holding their tails, though, waiting to get them glued back on. <laughs> Everybody looks pretty happy. Remember, we did see that way back at the wolf's house, didn't we? That one chip. So Dog picked it up. Good for him. Oh, look pretty happy now, don't they? Looks like they're singing. Even Dog looks pretty happy. <laughs> Dish smiled at Dog. I am a full plate, thanks to you. When the chips are down, you can count on me, Dog chuckled. Hey, guys, did you hear that? I cracked a joke. Dish began to laugh, then Spoon, then Cow, then Cat, and then Dog threw her head back and laughed louder than anyone else. Who would have believed it, said Cow. Dog really laughed. And Cat played the fiddle and saved us from Wolf, added Dog. And Cow got us to the beanstalk by jumping higher than ever, said Cat. Speaking of jumping, we better go. It's almost time. Hmm. And in the winkin' blinkin' of an eye, they were back home. Cow brought them all back home. Quick, places everyone, yelled Cat. What must it be time for? What do you think? Uh, if you think it's time to read the uh, nursery rhyme, I bet you're right. Hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such a sport, and the dish stayed at home with the spoon. <laughs> they decided not to run away again and get lost all over again, right? And so here we have... It says, for all the Jacks in our family, our grandfather and our brother, the real Jack of all trades, love Janet and Susie. <laughs> Cute. And here we are, back again. I think it's a bedroom, don't you? I think it is. Here we have books and toys on a shelf. This looks like a lamp, and maybe this is a pillow. I bet it is. A bedroom. Besides, where do you read bedtime stories, right? Probably in bed. <laughs> okay, and there they go. On the back, we see them saying goodbye to Fork, the fork in the road. Okay, well, right here it says ages five to eight, but oh my goodness. I think Janet and Susan Stevens write books for all of us at all ages. Well, that's our story time for today. Today is Thursday. Tomorrow is Friday. So we have another story time at 11 o'clock. 
And I'll see you then, my friends. Get outside, get some exercise, find a good book, and read, read, read. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.